Hello, beautiful people. My name is Kira, aka Words by Kira. And in this video, I am going to be telling you guys five important lessons that I learned in my 20s. Today is actually my birthday and I just turned 30 and I am so excited. I make videos about self-love and connecting with others through interviews. If you like content like that and this is the first time you're seeing my channel, then hit that bottom right subscribe button. You, you, you. Hit that bottom right subscribe button and join the family because I would love to have you. Okay, so let's get into it. I heard it was somebody birthday. Whew, okay, I have learned a lot in my 20s, but I really thought this video would be cool to like reflect on some of the top lessons that I learned through the course of that time. So number one, you do not need validation from others. Child, woo. Ooh, if I could go back, I would have told myself this a long time ago, but thank God I know it today. I think often in my early 20s, I was seeking a lot of validation, whether from friends, romantic interests, you know, boyfriends I had at the time. I felt like, oh, if they think highly of me, then I must be a good person. Or if they don't think highly of me, you know, if we have a problem, the relationship ends, is there something wrong with me? I just would put so much of my worth in other people's hands and really feeling like I couldn't see myself clearly on my own. So thank God, as I got towards the end of my 20s, and now that I'm in my beautiful, dirty 30, I don't feel that way anymore. Now I look to myself like, okay, Kara, who do you want to be? Who do I want to be? What type of things do I want to do? Learning more about myself, embracing all the different sides of me and just loving it as is. And for the things that I don't like, the things that are causing me pain that I have control over, okay, how do I go about healing it or setting boundaries in place? That's what it's been about, about Seeking that love from myself and giving it to myself and not just trying to get that feeling from others. So yeah, you don't need validation from anybody, okay? The number two lesson in my 20s was to try new things and not be so afraid of making a mistake. I've talked about this in other videos that I've had, but this was a huge lesson for me in my 20s. I can remember in college, I was so afraid to get an internship and senior year, I got one and I had, it was actually at this really cool nonprofit where their whole big mission was to promote mental health and to encourage STEM research and STEM types of careers and activities in the entertainment field, like through movies and music and things like that. And I remember I was like editing interviews for the first time. I was going to career fairs and trying to get other students to want to get involved in the nonprofit to maybe go for an internship when they graduated. I remember I went to a classroom with my supervisor and I spoke to high school students about journalism because that was my major in undergrad. And I was extremely nervous at first, but once I just Put myself in these situations yeah i made a mistake yeah okay i didn't know how to copy something at first i didn't know how to make coffee correctly at first but guess what i did it i tried if it was bad someone helped me or i'd have to figure it out on my own and i'm here to tell the tale right now so it's good to make mistakes sometimes that's how you learn that's how you grow and i think this was kind of going hand in hand with the whole need of validation. I think I was so petrified for someone to think I wasn't smart or to be exposed. I don't know, what's it called? Imposter syndrome. I felt like, oh, should I really be here? Absolutely, you should be here. Absolutely, you should be there. You should be where you can learn and grow and spread your wings. You should be in these places and have these opportunities that take you to a new level in your life. So yeah, no more imposter syndrome. Bye bye 20s with the imposter syndrome. We're not doing that anymore. And do not be afraid to make a mistake. It's a part of life. So that was definitely a very important lesson for me to learn. Number three. This is monumental. 
<laughs> for the young people out there or even the older people out there if this is something that you are still struggling with i'm here to say number three lesson do not date players do not date people who break your heart play games with your heart hot cold in out they're not really serious and you're trying to make it work let them go this is for any gender this is for gender fluid this is for anybody who is trying to date people i am not coming hard on the guys right now i know often sometimes we're like oh men or this and men or that i love men i have great men in my life a great father great male friends you know so i'm not here trying to bash men at all i just wanted to make that clear but hey a hit dog will holler. If you have a problem with the word player, no matter what gender, mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. But yeah, when I talk about players, okay, let's take it back. Let's take it back in time to a little baby Kira, little baby 20s Kira. I can't lie, y'all. I used to date players. Yes, I did. Me. She, me, her. <laughs> Tamar. <laughs> Yes, me. I used to date players. I, I know it's so strange. It's so strange. I don't know. I, I don't know. It was very immature, guys. Like I would be like, oh, this person's so handsome. They're confident. They're fun. They're popular. A lot of people like them. And it was very superficial, very surface. And guess what? Those people would be talking to a lot of other women behind my back, not telling the truth. They would not want to commit commit what they didn't even know what the word meant and they would be back and forth with me you know saying the nice things doing the nice things to keep me close but then doing sketchy stuff behind my back and then i'd have to hear about it from friends who wants to deal with that then my emotions are going up and down ah oh, no 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 their social media stressing you out you always who are they talking to now where are they at now where are they at Oh no, we're not doing that. We're not doing that anymore. Not in the beautiful 30s and hopefully not even in the 20s. But hey, that was a lesson that I learned in my 20s to not waste my time to actually love myself, respect myself, not feel like I need to chase guys or prove this and that, that the right person will come to me. I will attract the right person because I already love myself and I'm already good in a great place. So that attracts like-minded energy to me so yeah you do not want to date players people who are hurting you confusing you absolutely not save your precious energy okay and number four do things you love do things that bring you joy oh my gosh in the same vein of the whole I was dating players and stuff. So while I was dating players, I was really stressed out. My insecurities were rising. I was really struggling with my mental health and I just was not happy at all. And often when you're not happy, it's really hard to be productive. It's very hard to be creative and to do different things because you're so stuck in a sad dark place and anybody who might be going through that right now i pray that you feel better i pray that this video is some source of light right now for you some source of comfort because you absolutely deserve to have joy and to feel good about yourself okay but like I was saying, so when I was, you know, dating these people or just putting myself in these precarious situations, my light was like so darkened. I didn't, I couldn't even put energy into myself to do positive things. I was just so consumed by honestly nonsense, guys. And but thank God, as I got into my later 20s, I started thinking about who do I want to be? What do I want to do? And one of my really close friends, shout out Bill Johnson, he had this really amazing idea to shoot a pilot about this really cool store in his hometown. And he asked me to be a producer. I had never done anything like this, but mind you, my whole life, it's so crazy. I was kind of prepared for it because I always was watching movies with my family. We're such film connoisseurs and we always talk about art. So it's like, in a way, just my natural inclination and in my family was preparing me to do things like make videos, be a producer, be involved in entertainment. 
So after I got that little taste of being a producer, that's when I decided to work on short films independently with people, be a PA, be a production coordinator, be on set, work with actors, help to cast actors, you know? And it was amazing. It was beautiful. It felt right. It felt like home. And oh, I can't wait to get back into those spaces. And then it kind of launched me into writing, which I had done at, at a baby age, like at like four years old, I was writing little stories and my mom was laminating them for me. I always had the idea to be a writer, but because I was dating the wrong people and I had such low um, self-esteem, I wasn't doing things I loved. But once I started to do things I loved again, I felt more like myself. I learned more about myself and I was astonished at all the different things I could do. So yes, do things you love, do things that bring you joy. And it doesn't have to be to make money. It doesn't have to be this big hustle. It can be just, you don't even have to be good at it <laughs> or what you think is not good at it. As long as it makes you happy. I'm a horrible drawer. I am not the artist in the family. Shout out my dad, my nephews, my sister. They can draw, other family members can draw. I didn't get that gene. But that's okay. You know, I'm not going to hate on them for this video. But you know what? Coloring and drawing little doodles sometimes, even though they don't look the best, it makes me happy. It makes me feel good sometimes. So yeah, do things that bring you joy and you deserve it. Always know that. Okay. And lastly, the big five, the big fifth thing that I learned in my 20s is to surround myself with good people. All right, this isn't even just romantically. This is in all capacities, friendships, who you sit around in school or at work, if you can control it, things of that nature, because it is so important. We influence each other, you know, and some are more easily influenced than others, but even still, even if you have a very strong sense of self and you're not easily manipulated by others, it still is an influence to have other people's energy around you and to listen to what they say and to consume and watch the things that they do. So if it, to your own ability to control at this time, be very mindful of who you surround yourself with and think about how you want to feel when you're around these people. I know for me, I want to feel comfortable. I want to be around people I can trust. I want to be around people who inspire me and encourage me and support me. I don't want to be around people that are negative. I don't want to be around people who seem to be jealous or, you know, they want to put me down or people who are involved in very toxic behavior that doesn't align with my values. And then they want to just kind of put you around situations that are, that feel toxic to you, you know, and it could just drain your energy. So I'm very mindful of who I'm around and it is no, I'm not trying to judge anybody. I wish literally everybody the best, but I had to learn I need boundaries. Not everybody is going to stay on your journey with you. Over the past decade, I have let some friendships go. Obviously, I have let some romantic relationships go. And now the people that are in my life, the people that I have, I'm so grateful because they feel right for me. They love me. I love them. We respect each other. So yes, it is incredibly important. I know sometimes things can get lonely and you might think, oh, I've known this person for many years and you know, I don't want to hurt them. They've helped me back in the day. I want to stay loyal, even though our relationship is not what it used to be, even though I don't feel really good in this person's presence. I'm here to tell you, you do not have to take everybody on your journey. If your intuition, your gut is telling you something like this person doesn't feel right or this relationship doesn't fit in the way that it once did, if you think the relationship is worth it, have a conversation. Sometimes relationships have to evolve. Actually, I think all relationships, if they're not growing, if they're just staying stagnant, that's a recipe for disaster. So I'm not telling you, okay, you had one little argument with your friend or your girlfriend. 
cut it. <laughs> I'm not saying that at all. But if you're noticing a trend where you've been in a relationship with someone for a long time and you're just feeling very negative about it, the relationship just doesn't feel right for you. You've tried to communicate and it's not gone any better. Or maybe they've just done certain actions that completely do not align with your values and they are really hurtful for you, it's time to really evaluate if this relationship is right for you in the long run because you deserve to surround yourself with people that are good for you. Thank you so much for watching. This video was incredibly fun to make, to look back on my growth and to think about the woman that I am, the woman that I've become and that I'm continuing to become. The 30 so far seems so amazing and I'm really grateful. And I hope you guys continue to watch my videos to see this wild and fun, adventurous journey that I call life. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. I heard it was somebody's birthday.